All right, class. So this chapter, we're going to talk about compounds. I'm going to go over how to name different compounds. Now, before we talk about compounds, let's, let's go over what is a compound. So what a compound is, it usually is, is composed of two or more elements with a defined composition. So if you have two or more elements with a defined composition, you have a compound. Now, what really matters is a defined composition part. Now let's go over some example of what's a compound. NaCl, is that a compound? Yeah, that's actually a table salt. Aluminum oxide, is that a compound? Yeah. Uh, dinitrogen oxide, that's a compound. Nitrogen monoxide, that's a compound. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. These are examples of compound, two or more elements with a defined composition. Now, I want you to pay attention to the composition part. Let's go over NO2 and NO. NO2, N2O and NO. They look very similar, right? They both have nitrogen and oxygen, and one of them has an extra nitrogen. Do you think N2O and NO have similar properties or completely different properties? If you had to guess. So they both have the same elements, they both have nitrogen and oxygen, and one of them just has one extra nitrogen. What do you think, if you had to guess? I, I would have thought they probably have similar properties, right? Same elements, um, almost the same ratio, just one of them has one extra nitrogen. Well, check this out. N2O is laughing gas. So N2O is going to make you laugh. NO is going to kill you. So different, huh? That's why the defined composition, it really matters how many of the elements you have. It's not just that both have nitrogen and oxygen, that one extra nitrogen, and you are a completely different compound. One is going to make you laugh, one is going to kill you. Now, the other one I really like to, to talk about is carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Everyone thinks they're the same because they both have carbon and oxygen, but they're not the same. One of them has an extra oxygen. That makes a difference. Now, granted, they both can kill you, okay? But different ways, they're different ways they are going to kill you. Carbon monoxide is poisonous, and carbon dioxide is toxic. The one that I really don't like is carbon dioxide. Um, now, story time. 1986, I think there was a village in Africa. What, there was a small village and nearby there was a volcano. When there's a when volcano gets activated, one of the things that comes out of it is carbon dioxide. So it's nighttime, here's the village, village people are sleeping, nearby there's a volcano, the volcano gets activated overnight. It gets erupted and a lot of carbon dioxide comes out of it. So much carbon dioxide comes out of it that makes a carbon dioxide cloud. What happens is the cloud goes over the village and it kills everyone because it's toxic for you. But what do you think happens to the cloud after that? So if you have a cloud, after a while it just gets dispersed. So here is, again, this is the village. Here's a volcano, gets erupted, gets activated, lots of carbon dioxide comes out of it, so much that it makes a cloud. The cloud goes over the village, kills almost everyone. I think only six people survived. And then the cloud gets dispersed. So in the morning, everyone is dead and people have no idea what just happened. Isn't it interesting? Like it's a sad story, but the interesting part is the compound. They're, they look almost exactly the same, but the one extra oxygen makes a difference, right? Makes it to be a unique compound. So the moral of the story, do not live near a volcano. Okay, do not do that. That's kind of dangerous. So far so good. So you know what a compound is. So a compound is two more elements with a defined composition and the composition matters. It matters if you have one, ox one nitrogen or two nitrogen. It matters if you have two oxygen or one oxygen. Beautiful. Okay, so now that you know what compounds are, and I just told you a sad story, so you're probably a little sad right now, but let's, let's have a happy lecture. So, compounds 
I'm going to categorize, categorize compound into four categories, okay? I'm going to categorize compound into four categories. The first one is going to be ionic compound. The first one is going to be ionic compound, also salts or ionic compound. The second one is going to be covalent compound, then acid and base. So ionic, covalent, acid and base. These are going to be my category. I'm going to have four categories for compound. So far so good. Okay. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go over each one to see what does it mean to be ionic, covalent, acid and base and then how to name those compounds. Now before I do that, why do you think elements want to form compounds? Why do you think elements want to form compounds? Now, one thing you're gonna, you're gonna hear me say in class all the time, and it's so true, is that elements, they act a lot like human beings. So why do humans, why do we want to be in a relationship? Stability, right? It's the same thing with compounds. Come elements, the elements wants to want to be part of the compound, elements want to form compounds because when you form a compound, you're more stable. Stability is a driven force for a lot of things. So far, so good? Okay, now the first one that we are gonna go over is ionic. So the first thing we're gonna go over is ionic compound. Now, I always tell you this, know the basics. When you go to basic, you can never go wrong. To be an ionic compound, you're going to have a metal and you are going to have a non-metal. So to have an ionic compound, you're going to have a metal and you're going to have a non-metal. Ionic compound, a metal and a non-metal together. And you have to write the metal first and then the non-metal. Now, this is a great marriage. Here's why. Metals, what, what do they love to do? Metals, they love to lose electron. Metals, they love to lose electron. And think about it. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. When you lose electron, what do you become? So if you're neutral, and all the elements on a periodic table are neutral, but when you lose electron, what do you become? You become a cation, right? When you lose electron, you become a cation. You become positively charged. Go back to that lecture. Now, how about non-metal? What non-metals love to do, they love to gain electron. When you gain electron, what do you become? You become negatively charged. It is kind of counterintuitive. This is great. One wants to lose, the other one wants to gain. It's a pretty good relationship going on there. So, metal becomes a cation, non-metal becomes an anion. So, ionic compound is a balance of charges, plus minus charges. That's an ionic compound. So far, so good? Okay. Now, also remember what we talked about. We said that when elements on a periodic table, they are neutrals, but sometimes they could lose or gain electron. And when they lose or gain electron, they become charged. And they could have, if they lose electron, they become positively charged. If they gain electron, they become negatively charged, okay? They cannot lose proton or neutron, that's in the nucleus, but you can play around with the electrons. All right, so ionic compound. When elements, if you have a metal and a non-metal together, that's an ionic compound. Metal wants to lose, non-metal wants to gain, is a plus minus charges. Now take out your periodic table, I bought a periodic table, so I don't have to draw a periodic table as I did last time. That didn't go well. Okay, so take out your periodic table. Now, we are going to go over what happens to elements when they form a compound. So you have a periodic table out? Okay. So what I want you to do, I want you to look at group 1A. Okay? I want you to look at group 1A. These are metals, right? Remember, these are all metals and these are my non-metals. One thing to remember is that, again, goes back to elements are just like human beings. In, 
in their chemistry world is considered really, really sexy if you look like a normal gas. I remember the normal gas is group A day. These are the normal gases. So it's considered really sexy if you look like a normal gas. You know how like, we want to look like celebrities, right, sometimes? So on a periodic table, they want to look like noble gases. That's their celebrity. They, everyone wants to look like a noble gas. Okay. So let's look at group 1A. Here is group 1A. So again, everyone wants to be sexy. Everyone wants to look like a noble gas. If you look at this, for example, look at lithium. Lithium has three electrons. If lithium loses one electron, is going to look like helium who has two electrons. So by losing one electron, lithium can look like a noble gas and that is considered good. They like that. They want to look like a noble gas. Let's look at sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons. If sodium loses just one electron, sodium is going to look like neon who has 10 electrons. Let's look at potassium. How many electrons does potassium have? Hopefully you're telling me potassium has 19 electrons. If it loses just one electron, if it loses one electron, it's going to look like argon who has 18 electrons. So what I want you to do, I want you to write down on top of group 1A that write down a plus 1. Write down a plus 1. Write down a plus one, I should say this, on top of group 1A. Because what they want, they all want to lose one electron. So write down a plus one on top of group 1A. Because if all of them lose one electron, they're going to look like a noble gas. And that is considered a good thing on a periodic table. Okay? Now, tell me, what do you think? Group 2A. How many do they need to lose to look like a noble gas? They need to lose two to look like a noble gas, right? B has four electrons. If it loses two, it will look like a helium. So put a plus two, put a plus two on top of group 2A. You follow me so far? Okay. Now, what I want you to do, put a plus three on top of group 3A. Put a plus three on top of group 3A. We're going to ignore group 4A because carbon and silicon, they don't really want to form ionic compound. They don't really like to do that. So we're going to skip that for now. Now, let's go to our non-metals. And of course, conveniently, I ignore the transition metals because they're a hard mess. I'm going to come back to them. So plus one, plus two, because they want to lose electron, plus three, they want to lose three electrons to look like a noble gas. Again, metals, they lose electron. Now, let's go to non-metals. Halogen. Which column is a halogen? Halogens are, these are the halogens. So they're non-metals. Non-metals, they want to gain electron, right? Here's why they want to gain electron. Fluorine has nine electron. If it gains one more electron, it's going to look like neon. So it's easier to gain one electron to look like a neon than lose seven electron to look like a helium, right? So by gaining one electron, it's going to look like neon. So halogen, this column, this group over here, put minus one on top. They all want to gain one electron because they gain one electron, they look like a noble gas. Look at chlorine, 17 electron, one electron would be 18, would be argon. Now, what do you think of the oxygen group? How many do they want to gain? They want to gain two electrons. So what, again, when you gain electron, you become minus, right? So put a minus two on top of the oxygen group. Now, what do you think the nitrogen group? Yeah, minus three. So put a minus three on top of the nitrogen group. 
All right, now we're gonna review this together right now. You ready? So elements, they're neutral by themselves, but sometimes elements wanna form compounds to be more stable. When you form a compound, you have to lose or gain electron. So elements are neutral, but when they form a compound, they have to lose or gain electron. If you form an ionic compound, you have to compromise a little bit, right? You have to give some. You're going to lose or gain electron. Now, the metals are going to lose electron. The non-metals are going to gain electron. How many electrons? Based on the periodic table. Group 1A plus 1. Group 2A plus 2. Group 3A plus 3. Halogen minus one, oxygen group minus two, nitrogen group minus three. You follow me so far? Okay, nice job, nice job. Now, I, again, don't worry about the transition at all. We'll come back to that mess. They're a hard mess. Let's look at this group over here. So they don't really want to form an ionic compound, except I want you to circle 10, Sn, and Pb, okay? I want you to circle 10, Sn, and lead, Pb. 10 and lead, when they form ionic compound, they have two possible charges, plus two or plus four. Plus two or plus four. So lead and PB, that PB is lead, lead and 10, SN and PB, put a plus 2 or plus 4. Sometimes they're going to lose 2 electrons and sometimes they lose 4 electrons. We'll go over that later. So put a plus 2 or plus 4 for 10 and PB. All right, beautiful so far. Very, very nice job. We're good so far. Plus one, plus two, plus three. Minus one, minus two, minus three. And 10 and PV could be plus two or plus four. Okay, learn it right now uh, before we go to the next part. So that was our periodic table. That was our periodic table. Now what we're gonna do, let's put together, let's put together how you would write and name ionic compound. So you know ionic compound is a metal and a non-metal, is a balance of charges because one has to lose, one has to gain in order to form a compound, uh, ionic compound. So let's go over how you would write and name ionic compounds. The first one we're gonna do, we're gonna do NaCl. And yeah, we're just talking about ionic compound. We're gonna do Na and Cl. Okay, look at the periodic table for me right now. The one that you just labeled. Na is in which group? Is in first group, right? So Na, when it forms a compound, it would become plus one. So sodium is one A group. So what that means is, it's gonna be plus one. Okay, how about Cl? When Cl forms a compound, what's the charge on it? Cl is in a halogen group that is minus one. So sodium is plus one, Cl is minus one. You have to write the metal first and then the non-metal. Okay, is this balanced? Yeah, plus one, minus one is beautifully balanced, is NaCl. Okay, now let's put the next thing together. Mg and Cl. Let's put Mg and Cl together. Look at the periodic table. Look at the periodic table. What is the charge for Mg? Mg is right here. What's the charge? Plus 2. Cl is right here. What's the charge? Minus 1. So Mg is plus 2 and Cl is minus 1. Okay, now remember, you have to end up having a neutral compound. For example, on top, plus one, minus one cancel each other out. This is not a neutral compound right now. So what we have to do, we have to cross 
multiply the charges. Now, what does that mean? Here's what that means. The two comes down here and the one goes here. So we're gonna cross multiply the charges. Don't worry about the sign. So now, what would that mean? That means MG would get a one and they would never write down the one. And CL would have a two. So it would be MGCL2. So you take the charges, put the charges out, and you cross multiply them. And then you never write actually one. So why did I do that? Here's why we do this. Because remember, so MG was plus two, CL was minus one. Now this compound is neutral. I have one MG, that's plus two, CL is minus one, minus one times two, is minus two, so together they end up being a neutral compound. So what is ionic compound? Ionic compound is just a balance of charges. So MgCl2 was my compound. NaCl was my compound. Is a balance of charges. Is a balance of charges. We're good so far? Okay, so what's ionic compound? Balance of charges. Now, let's go over how you would name these, okay? We'll do more practice problem, but let's go over how you would name this. Here's how you would name it. You would name the cation, the metal, as is, and then you would name the non-metal, the anion, and you change the ending to ide. Don't write it down, let's do a problem, and you'll see what I mean by that. So the first one, what is Na? Na is sodium. Cl is chlorine, but you change the ending to ide. So the sodium chloride. Okay. You guys got this down? So you name the cation, the first one, the metal. And then you name the second one, the non-metal, and you change the naming to I. Let's go to this one right here. Mg is magnesium. This would be magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride. Nothing else you need to do. Magnesium chloride. You following me so far? Okay. So again, you name the cation, and then you name the anion, and then what you have to do, you have to change the ending to I. Now, let's do a more practice problem. I'm gonna give you two more to do. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. And pause me, do this, and then go over it. First one, I want you to put together AL, and sulfur, aluminum and sulfur, and then I want you to put together calcium and oxygen. So write this down and then name them. So balance the charges because I only come in the balance of charges. So balance the charges and then I want you to name them. Pause me and then unpause me. So let's do this. Aluminum and sulfur. I'm going to go back to my periodic table. Aluminum has a charge of plus three. So aluminum is neutral, but when it forms a compound, it's going to lose three electrons. So aluminum has a charge of plus three, and sulfur has a charge of minus two. Again, all the, all the elements are neutral, but when they form a compound, they have to lose or gain electron. You have to compromise somehow when you form a compound, right? And you have to give something. So aluminum is plus three, sulfur is minus two. I want to come over here. So aluminum is plus three, sulfur is minus two. And you always write the metal and the non-metal, the cation, the anion. Okay, then I'm going to cross multiply the charges. I'm going to cross multiply the charges. This go here, this go over there. Okay, don't worry about the sign. So now, what does that mean? That means 
I'm going to get AL2 S3. So you cross multiply the charges. 2 goes over here, 3 goes over here. Aluminum sulfide. Okay. Now again, why did we do that? Here's why we did this. Because the entire compound has to end up being neutral. So aluminum is plus 3, sulfur is minus 2. Plus 3 times 2 is plus 6. Minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. Ends up being a neutral compound. Ends up being a neutral compound. So what we have is Al2S3. Now, how did you name that? Aluminum. Ah. Al this is so hard to write on this board. Oh my goodness. Aluminum sulfide. Aluminum sulfide. All you have to do, you change the ending to I. Aluminum sulfide. Yeah? Okay. Let's go to the next one. CaO. What is the charge on calcium? You can put it on a table. I'm not going to bring it up, but you have to put it on a table. Is in group 2A is plus 2. What's the charge on oxygen? Minus 2. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to cross multiply the charges, right? We're going to cross multiply the charges. If I do that, then what I get, I get Ca2O2. I get Ca2O2. Okay. Now, here is the last thing to know about writing ionic compound. I get Ca2O2. What could I do to this? After you cross multiply the charges, you need to simplify if you could simplify. Can I simplify here? I can't. So if you could simplify, you definitely should simplify. How can I simplify this? Divided by, divided by two. Because if I divide it by two, what I get is CaO. We're good? Okay, let's take a step back. So I put the metal first, then the non-metal. I'm going to look at the periodic table to figure out what the charges are when they form an ionic compound. Once I have the charges, I cross multiply the charges. Once you cross multiply the charges, if you could simplify, you must simplify. Now here, I couldn't really simplify, right? Two and three, nothing to simplify. Here, I have two and two. Could I simplify? I could simplify. And if you could simplify, you should simplify. So CaO would be my final compound. How do I name this? Ca is calcium, o o is oxygen, but the ending has to be I, so it's calcium oxide. It's calcium oxide. Calcium oxide. Are we good so far? Okay. Beautiful. Now, let's do one more practice problem before I show you one more thing. Next thing I'm going to talk about is, hmm. Let's see. Calcium nitride. Calcium nitride. Okay? What I want you to do, I want you to write down the formula for calcium nitride. So in this case, I, I gave you the name and I want you to write the formula. So calcium nitride, write the formula for calcium nitride. Okay, write it while I'm erasing the rest of the board. Calcium nitride. Okay, so I give you the name. I'm asking you to write the formula. What's the symbol for calcium? Hopefully you memorize that by now. Ca. And nitride used to be nitrogen. That is N. Okay. So know the symbols, right? Calcium is Ca. N is nitrogen. Now, we can put it on a table. 
Calcium is in the second column, second group, so it would be plus 2, and nitrogen is minus 3, okay? Then minus 3. So what am I going to do? I'm going to cross multiply the charges. I'm going to cross multiply the charges. If I do that, what does that mean? It would be Ca3N2. Ca3N2. And I did that because if you do the math, it ends up being a neutral compound. If you do the math, it would end up being a neutral compound. Okay, are we good so far? All right, nice job. So what we did, we did all the ionic compounds, the metal and the non-metal together. You have to do the metal first, then the non-metal. And the ionic compound is a balance of charges. Ionic compound is nothing but balance of charges. So you balance the charges, you simplify if you can. And then the naming is easy. You just name the element and then you change the ending to I. You change the naming to I. All right, beautiful. Very, very nice job. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a take home problem. And next time, we'll go over transition metals. We go over transition metals to, to see what we have to do to the transition metal. Let me see, what do I want to give you? PBCL2. So you know what? Let's do it together right now. I'm not going to make it a take-home problem. I'll give you a harder take-home problem later. PBCL2. Okay? It's already balanced, right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to name this. PBCL2s. Name it right now. Pause me, or if you can do it really fast. PBCL2 is already balanced. I want you to name it. It's an ionic compound. There's a metal and a non-metal together. Now, what is PB? PB is lead. What is Cl? Chlorine. So it ends up being chloride. Lead chloride. There is a problem with this. Okay. The last problem, when I told you calcium nitride, you wrote down, that was easy, you said that's easy. Here's calcium, here's nitrogen, I know calcium is plus two, nitrogen is minus three, I cross multiply the charges, this is what I get. That's when I give you calcium nitride. But if I give you lead chloride, what are you gonna ask me? If I tell you, write down the formula for lead chloride, what are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me which lead? Plus 2 or plus 4? So I want you to pay attention to this part. When I say calcium nitride, it's easy to write the formula because I know calcium is always plus 2, nitrogen is always minus 1, I just cross multiply the charges. But lead and tin are the two metals that they could be plus two or they could be plus four. They have two possible charges. So if you name, if you name PBCL2, you can't just say lead chloride because if you tell me, yeah, can you go get me some lead chloride? The first question I'm gonna ask you is, which lead do you want? Do you want lead two chloride or do you want lead or chloride. You guys see that? Okay. So, so far, the only elements that you know that have more than one possible charge are lead and tin. When you have more than one possible charge, what you have to use, you have to use a Roman numeral to let us know which one you're talking about. Now, in this case, is this lead plus two or lead plus four? So let me summarize this to just make sure you're really good to that. Right now, all the elements have one possible charge. Sodium is always plus one. Calcium plus two. Oxygen minus two. Cl minus one. 
bromine minus one, lithium plus one, right? You just look at the periodic table and you go with that. The only two elements that we know so far are PB and tin. PB and tin, they could be plus two or plus four. When you have elements like lead and tin who have more than one possible charge, you have to mention which one you are talking about using a Roman numeral. Because if you tell me lead chloride, I don't know how to write the formula. Which lead are you talking about? So let's go over here. Which lead am I talking about here? Well, you know Cl is minus one, right? You know Cl is minus one, so there's nothing here. The two came from lead. The two came from Pb. So what would be the charge for Pb? Plus two. This is plus two, this is one. That's how we cross multiply it. So which lead am I talking about here? So the lead that I'm talking about here is lead two chloride. So the lead that I'm talking about here is lead two chloride. Okay, so lead and tin, you have to be careful. Every time you have elements, so far the only two elements we have is lead and tin, who have more than one possible charges, you have to use a Roman numeral to let us know which charge you're talking about, to let us know which lead you're talking about. Here is lead two chloride, is because it's PBCl2. If it was PBCl4, then it would be lead four chloride, okay? So if I had told you guys that this is PBCl4, then I would have known that, okay, so I know Cl is always minus one, the four comes from the PB, so what this has to be, this has to be lead four chloride. And we use a Roman numeral, we use a Roman numeral to mention, do we have lead two or do we have lead four? So don't forget, lead and tin, you should always use a Roman numeral because they have more than one possible charge. You feel pretty good about this? Okay, beautiful. So you don't have a technical problem, that's okay. Uh, spend some time making sure you know the elements, make sure you know how to write down the charges. I will talk to you guys next time to do more ionic compound. We're not done with ionic compound yet. We have one more lecture to do ionic compound. I'll see you guys next time.